graduate school of economic and management uh, course of intellectuals. Uh, today's lecture will be devoted to um, measures uh, aimed at fighting coronavirus and the title of the lecture is fighting coronavirus as the test for the government efficiency. Uh, first I will introduce myself, then I will announce the agenda, the plan of our lecture and uh, will gradually move to the contents, to the measures and their assessment. Uh, you're welcome to ask me questions in the course of the lecture. Uh, I can see them in the chat or if you want, you can switch on your microphone and ask me um, right at, uh, let's say, face to face. Uh, and um, um, I will respond to the questions either uh, when they uh, when I get them or in the end of the lecture, I will devote some time also to additional questions uh, if you have any. Uh, so first I will introduce myself. Uh, my name is Evgenia Kuznetsova. Uh, I am assistant professor at the Gradual, Graduate School of Economics and Management, and also I am uh, head of one of the educational programs of this uh, school, namely uh, legal support for a national security program. I'm a lawyer. I've got PhD in law, uh, so this will uh, uh, partially precondition the content of my lecture today, I will assess the measures on fighting coronavirus uh, as a lawyer and from the point of view of law and also public administration, uh, not from the point of view of economic um, measures that were undertaken, although I will also cover that. Uh, so uh, we will follow the next um, The next plan uh, that you see on the screen. Uh, first, I will speak briefly about the uh, state of emergency. What is a state of emergency? How uh, can it be introduced to uh, by the government? Uh, and also, uh, what for should the governments introduce state of emergency? How can it influence measures that can be implemented against coronavirus? Uh, then we will turn to uh, human rights restrictions that were introduced in different countries, and we will analyze uh, what kind of restrictions were imposed on people and businesses, uh, how different countries react to that. Uh, we will also cover then public response to those measures uh, because people in different countries react differently to the measures that were undertaken and uh, this is also a part of the efficiency of the government, uh, the way it interacts with its population. Uh, then I will turn to probably one of the most important issues uh, in fighting coronavirus, uh, which is measures to support businesses, because we all know that nowadays businesses are in a very difficult situation. They face extended crisis and uh, they need governmental support. And finally, I will dwell, uh, dwell upon, upon social guarantees for the citizens, because not only um, economics and businesses are um, influenced by this um, horrible pandemia, but also uh, but also uh, ordinary people. Uh, before I move to uh, the state of emergency issue, I want to demonstrate to you the um, the record which shows the spread of coronavirus uh, in the world. So we see that firstly only China was influenced by the virus, but gradually, month by month, uh, many countries were influenced by this situation. And nowadays we can see that the whole world is under the threat and very many countries are uh, suffering major consequences which are um, induced by coronavirus. World Health Organization announced uh, pandemia, pandemic situation, which again means that uh, the whole world is uh, at threat and very many countries are influenced by this uh, disease. Uh, at the graph, at the map, you see that nowadays at the moment, this is the data on uh, uh, May 14th, uh, the most influenced countries with the greatest rates of sick people are Russia, United States, and Brazil. Uh, however, uh, many other countries, starting from China and ending up with many countries, uh, both in Europe, in Africa, in Latin America, uh, 
have already fought with the disease and have already implemented uh, many measures which were aimed at fighting the virus. So what measures uh, were undertaken? Uh, the first thing I want to start with is the state of emergency. Uh, what is this and what for do we need state of emergency in such cases as pandemia uh, or major problems with healthcare sector in the countries. So state of emergency is a legal regime which allows uh, derogations from human rights obligations of states. Uh, this uh, uh, regime, the regime of state of emergency, um, is mentioned not only in the constitutions of different countries, but also in international instruments, such as, for example, International Covenant for Civil and Political Rights. Uh, this covenant covers um, most issues regarding human rights in the world, and it has been signed and ratified by the majority of the countries in the world. Uh, so Article 4 of the ICC CPR of the Covenant uh, mentions that uh, any state can derogate from the obligations uh, in the Covenant, enshrined in the Covenant, in case it introduces the state of emergency. Uh, however, uh, Article 4 also sets certain requirements for the introduction of the state of emergency. So it's not the state only who decides when and in under which conditions uh, it can introduce the state of emergency. Article 4 enumerates the conditions that you again see on the slide. Uh, first, to introduce the state of emergency, there should exist threat to the life and existence of the nation. Uh, this uh, provision is not, of course, explained uh, in the covenant, but uh, in case of pandemia, in case um, the state can prove certain level of disease and um, a big number of sick people in the country, we uh, state that yes, there exists a uh, uh, threat to life and existence of the nation, so the state of emergency can be introduced. Uh, secondly, which is uh, critically important, state of emergency should be proclaimed officially. Uh, usually, the regime of introduction of the state of emergency is prescribed in the constitution of the country. Uh, if uh, to refer to the example of Russia, uh, under the constitution, um, the state of emergency can be introduced by the order of the president or by the decree of the president, which should be later confirmed by the upper chamber of the parliament. Uh, in many other countries, the state of emergency shall be introduced by federal law or by law if we speak about unitary states. Uh, why this provision is important and uh, why um, most states or many states have already introduced the state of emergency, because people should be aware first of the critical situation that a country faces, and secondly, of future human rights limitations that would follow after the state of emergency. Uh, so third uh, requirement for the state of emergency introduction is strict correspondence of the measures to the situation. The measures that can be implemented under the state of emergency allow restrictions of human rights, but they should be aimed strictly to fight in the situation that the country faces. In our case, the situation with the coronavirus um, disease and spread. Uh, and the fourth requirement is that measures should be consistent with international obligations of the states uh, and sh should not be discriminatory. Uh, the principle of non-discrimination is enshrined directly in Article 4, which uh, regulates the state of emergency introduction. Uh, so should the states uh, introduce the state of emergency? Uh, I um, named several countries which has already introduced this uh, regime, uh, starting from Italy, Spain, Japan, Ethiopia, uh, Armenia, Estonia, Georgia, Hungary, many states in uh, Europe uh, and in Asia have already introduced this regime. Uh, 48 states in the United States of America also introduced their, uh, the state of emergency. Uh, in the US, this uh, decision is made on the state level. Uh, in China, uh, the, uh, the decision can be made on the city level, so in many cities in Russia, the state of emergency has been announced. Uh, but many countries refrain from uh, this measure, and they do not 
proclaim the state of emergency. Uh, for example, Russia uh, has never announced, has never proclaimed the state, the, the state of emergency. Uh, what is the reason for that? Um, some people believe that uh, proclamation of the state of emergency imposes a very big burden to the state, to the government, and requires state to take very many measures and pay for the obligations of the people and the businesses in the country. That is why the introduction of the state of emergency um, is not, let's say, profitable, beneficial for the state. Uh, but usually it's not like that. Uh, usually uh, the government undertakes certain measures, which it spells out in the order uh, about the introduction of the state of emergency. Uh, usually, again, uh, the government does not pay for the obligations of the citizens. Uh, and uh, um, the general rule in different states is that all binding payments, such as uh, taxes or, I don't know, communal services, uh, they are still due. So they should be paid by both citizens and the businesses. And the government does not undertake to cover those uh, binding payments or to seize them, for example. Uh, however, the state of emergency uh, requires the state, the government, to undertake certain measures which should be aimed at fighting the situation. Uh, and uh, uh, also, usually, the state of emergency leads to the right of people, uh, of citizens and businesses, uh, to claim compensation for losses that were caused by the state of emergency and by the situation in general. Uh, but no automatic payment, no automatic financing is enshrined into this regime. Uh, so every situation should be decided on a case-by-case -case basis. And, uh, um, generally, citizens and businesses have the right to claim compensation from um, omissions or uh, actions by, of the government that caused certain damages to those uh, citizens or businesses. So this is uh, the general rule and state of emergency does not here impose a higher standard on uh, uh, the government. However, uh, the introduction of the state of emergency is first of all, let's say honest, because people uh, are aware of what's going on. And second, it legalizes the measures that the governments undertake. In my view, uh, and being a lawyer, I strongly believe that every state which faces high rate of uh, disease and sick people and um, um, admits the pandemia, uh, shall introduce the state of emergency and implement measures on human rights restrictions on a legal basis, uh, which, for example, Russia uh, did not do, unfortunately. Uh, so turning to the human rights restrictions, um, here we can um, separate two situations. Uh, first, an ordinary situation, uh, which we do not face uh, right now, uh, mainly. And the second is the state of emergency. Uh, as for the state of emergency, I have already mentioned that uh, um, restrictions of human rights are allowed under this regime and they can be introduced in simplified uh, order uh, if the state of emergency is um, uh, proclaimed. Uh, but there is a list of rights which cannot be derogated from. Uh, but in ordinary situation, in case the state does not uh, announce the state of emergency, uh, the human rights restrictions can be imposed only under the law. And this requirement is uh, uh, again enshrined in the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, as well as in the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights. So this regime and this order is uh, um, accepted by the whole international community. So uh, the restriction should be imposed by federal law or by, by the law, by the legal act. Uh, also, the restriction should uh, aim at specific purposes. Uh, usually they are enumerated either in the article of the ICCPR, uh, which uh, dwells upon certain right, or in the constitution of the country. Uh, and thirdly, they should comply with the proportionality um, 
principle. So the restrictions should be proportionate to the situation existing or to the aim that the restriction aims at. Uh, of course, in the case of pandemia, when we see a lot of um, diseases and quite fast spreading of the disease, uh, all the requirements uh, like proportionality or specific purposes like protection of health, protection of life, of people, they exist. Uh, the question is, uh, what is the legal regime of the restrictions that are introduced and what is the response of the government uh, to those um, derogations that it imposes to the citizens and the businesses. Uh, in my view, the current situation really puts the governmental policies in, in all the countries at test and uh, not only the restrictions matter, uh, but, only, uh, but also the support of the government and the response of the government to uh, those restrictions to the citizens. Uh, so let, uh, let's have a look at the restrictions that have been introduced in, in different countries. Uh, and um, you can see uh, the table which states what right uh, has been uh, limited, uh, what were the measures, particular measures introduced uh, to limit this right, uh, and uh, what's the prevalence, what the situation in the world, uh, how many countries uh, introduced this or that restriction. So uh, first of all, we pro I probably I start with this right because it influences me uh, personally. Uh, this is the right to education. Uh, we know that in the majority of the countries, uh, schools and educational institutions have been closed. Uh, this measure uh, has been introduced in uh, almost all the countries in the world. Uh, however, in some countries, schools and universities um, have been closed so they do not work and um, uh, children cannot realize their right to education. Uh, in some countries, the um, educational organizations were required to provide uh, online learning to their students, uh, which also requires some effort from uh, the universities, from schools. It requires some organizational support from the government. Uh, it requires a lot of technical measures that should be implemented, but it allows citizens to um, realize, to implement their right to education. Uh, so this uh, first measure is uh, really widespread and uh, it was one of the first measures that had, has been introduced in the majority of the countries. Uh, by now, this measure remains, um, uh, remains um, in action, let's say, uh, and uh, uh, the majority of countries do not open uh, schools and universities yet. Uh, I have the comment from Raisel, some countries proclaim the state of emergency because of increasing the number of infected people. The number of infected people uh, um, in Russia is low, yeah, as far as I understand. But the number of deaths of people is not increasing in comparison to the number of infected people. Is the government of Russia hiding the number of deaths of people due to the political agenda? Uh, yeah, I see the question. Uh, so first of all, um, First point, uh, Russia by now stands, um, takes the first place uh, or ranks in the top of um, uh, the countries with the number of infected people. Uh, however, I agree that the number of deaths is not that high in Russia. Uh, and um, actually the question how to assess the reason of the death remains open in very many countries uh, because uh, usually people die not of coronavirus itself, but from the consequences uh, of the virus to the health of the people. Uh, and uh, uh, hospitals can offer different reasons for death of a person. Um, I, as far as I know, in the very beginning, uh, many countries put coronavirus as the main reason of the death. Uh, in Russia now, yes, I agree, coronavirus is a very seldom reason uh, and um, um, hospitals, doctors can put other reasons uh, which are connected to the virus, but not the virus itself. I cannot tell you 100% whether the number of deaths uh, is uh, uh, hidden by the government due to the political agenda. And, um, 
by the way, I do not see a very urgent political agenda in the country. If you mean the change of the constitution, it's not that uh, critical by now, and people are not do not care about this uh, as much as about the virus. Uh, so. I personally think that the number of deaths is adequate and that hospitals assess uh, the reason of death as they should. Uh, so um, I personally do not think that the government here hides something, uh, but still uh, the situation requires introduction of the state of emergency, I believe. It required the introduction of the state of emergency uh, months ago, months and a half ago, uh, but the government refrained from doing this. Also, the, the disease spreads still. Uh, so turning back to the restrictions, uh, I've mentioned the restriction of the right to education. Uh, the second type of restriction, which also touches uh, very many people all around the world is the right to free labor and entrepreneurship. Uh, as you know, many countries um, closed uh, businesses, organizations, and uh, prohibited people to go uh, to work. Uh, those um, companies who can work uh, on remote access, who can work distantly, let's say, uh, they introduce this remote access employment, uh, but uh, very many uh, factories, plants, uh, or organizations, small businesses, uh, they cannot uh, introduce this remote access and remote employment, uh, which requires a temporary closure of the business. Uh, this um, measure, is um, really disputable because it uh, has very, very negative impact on the economic uh, of the country in general, on the welfare of people, on the profits of businesses and ordinary people, uh, and um, uh, strict prohibition uh, to work leads further to detrimental consequences to the whole country. Uh, so there are 25 countries, around 25 countries, which introduced strict prohibition. Uh, Russia, again, is one of them. Uh, and of course, this prohibition has been introduced in China in the beginning, but now it's not uh, already an issue. It again has been introduced in India, but uh, now uh, it uh, has already been facilitated. Uh, so uh, there are countries, yes, that introduced this tr uh, strong prohibition, but in the majority of countries, uh, the regime is um, uh, medium, let's say. So uh, the, there is a list of uh, organizations that, that can still work uh, and a limited number of organizations that should cease their work until the uh, state of emergency, for example, will be ceased. Um, so the third um, right uh, that has been restricted is the freedom of assembly. Uh, first of all, uh, all the countries uh, prohibited public events uh, and also they banned uh, public gathering. Uh, this uh, limitation has been introduced in uh, almost all the countries in the world. Uh, there is a very, very limited number of countries uh, which do not react uh, or which uh, do not inform uh, international community about the measures they undertake. Uh, so I uh, believe that all the countries in the world prohibited uh, public gathering and uh, uh, public events. Uh, but in some countries in Africa, uh, the number of these countries is not that high, uh, people still can gather in numbers from 10 to 100 people. Uh, so every country varies the number of people uh, which can gather. Uh, by now, in Russia, uh, we still have the prohibition on public events and on public gathering uh, in numbers more than two. <laughs> For example, in the city where I live, people can walk together uh, in the streets starting from Monday, but they can walk only in, um, in numbers of two, uh, not more. Uh, the next uh, restriction is the restriction of the freedom of movement. Uh, and again, it was one of the restrictions that has been introduced first. Uh, the countries closed the borders. Uh, it um, concerns 
again all the countries in the world uh, first the borders were closed and now uh, international um, travel is not possible the majority of the countries also prohibited internal trips and internal traveling and also let's say uh, restricted freedom of movement uh, within the territory of the country uh, but this is not that detrimental to people um, as a stay-at-home regime uh, so-called social distances uh, distancing self-isolation stay at home or lockdown regime has been introduced in uh, the majority of the countries however uh, the level of strictness again varies from country to country um, on the slide you see countries with the strictest uh, limitations by now uh, here we see russia china kazakhstan and saudi arabia uh, these countries introduced a uh, strong prohibition to leave houses um, except for some limited reasons uh, for example in russia the only valid reasons to leave the uh, the flat the house are um, medical purposes or pharmacy uh, the nearest uh, store when you can buy food and you can walk with your dog not far from uh, your house uh, 100 meters from your house if you walk outside for some other reasons running i don't know cycling walking with your friends uh, you can be imposed uh, a fine um, the number of fine varies uh, again from region to region uh, so uh, the police uh, should control whether this uh, order is implemented uh, in the majority of countries which are not mentioned here uh, the stay at home regime is um, um, is more a recommendation a strict recommendation but not a requirement by the government so the majority of states they offer citizens to stay at home uh, and they do not impose very strict control measures uh, on the citizens uh, for example in uh, europe in uh, uh, in the united states uh, people can still uh, jog yeah do their physical training exercises uh, in the streets. They can walk with their dogs anywhere they want. Uh, they can uh, walk in the parks. Um, so the stay-at-home regime is not that strict. Uh, and the right, the last right I want to mention that has been restricted is the right to privacy. Uh, here we see several measures which uh, influence our right to privacy uh, so first is uh, tracing contacts um, here the number of states which introduced this measure is lower than the number of states which introduce for example stay-at-home regime uh, but many states um, uh, and again russia china um, are um, the strictest here they introduce the strictest requirements to trace contact contacts of people uh, for example in russia you should inform a particular governmental agency uh, if you travel to another city if you travel to another country if you contacted with the person who had some disease uh, uh, infection uh, everything should be uh, transferred to the government in the majority of states this regime is not that strict uh, the second measure uh, which also uh, influences the right to privacy uh, is uh, medical testing uh, again, here the policy varies and uh, the main reason for uh, various approaches to this measure is the facilities of the country. Uh, the majority of the countries, they faced major problem with the tests um, uh, aimed to identify coronavirus, uh, which they do not have. Uh, and which they cannot produce. Uh, the majority of countries, they used uh, um, tests that has been invented first in China, uh, but uh, the, uh, let's say, um, the validity of this test uh, is still uh, under question uh, and also the tests are quite expensive in the very beginning the price of the test uh, was around 300 euros which is quite expensive and uh, um, the majority of the states they cannot allow uh, to test everyone 
Uh, so uh, testing for sure limits the right to privacy. Uh, it is of course required to stop pandemia. Uh, however, the majority of the states do not have enough uh, financing, enough uh, healthcare facilities uh, to provide testing for everyone. Uh, and the last uh, measure I want to address here, which also um, affects the right to privacy, is uh, uh, e-passes, uh, electronic permits for people uh, to move around the city. Uh, such system has been introduced in Moscow recently, uh, where people had to apply for electronic permits to enter the city and also to move around the city, to use taxi, uh, to move from one district to another, they had to guess this uh, the, that electronic pass and um uh, those passes has been checked uh, in subway, for example, in public transport, by taxi drivers and all that. Uh, for sure, this uh, measure I would say violates the right to privacy and the right to, uh, and the freedom of movements. Um, and whether this th this measure is um justified by the virus fighting is disputable because uh, um, yeah of, of course the freedom of movement sh should be somehow restricted but uh, can the government spy on its citizens and follow the citizens from point a to point b is highly disputable uh, so we can divide the measures, um, speaking about the efficiency of the governments, uh, we can divide the measures uh, implemented uh, into three groups. Uh, the first group uh, I called measures implemented by people or business, meaning that here the government plays just the role of the controlling party. Uh, the government just introduces the restriction, however it's for people, for citizens and for businesses to implement the measure. Um, here I think that uh, we can speak about the freedom of movement uh, because uh, people are restricted from movement but it's up to, uh, not up to them, but um, uh, they shall uh, follow the obligation and stay at home. Uh, the same is about the freedom of assembly uh, and uh, the same is about the freedom of labor and entrepreneurship. The state imposes a limitation, but the businesses suffering losses uh, shall follow the obligation and close, uh, close the business or temporarily cease its work. Uh, the second group of measures uh, are the measures that shall be implemented by the government at the cost of the government and which requires specific measures and specific financing from the government. Uh, of course, the first big group of measures uh, concerns healthcare sector. Uh, the government had to organize uh, free places at hospitals. Uh, as we know in China, for example, hospitals has been built in in the days uh, to provide places for people um, infected by coronavirus. Uh, also here we include the testing system, uh, which I uh, said is a problem in many countries. Uh, the tracing of contacts and uh, following people uh, movements is also the obligation of the state here, which requires higher level of uh, control, the um, work of law enforcement agencies and all that. Uh, and also the control measures. So the government should control uh, everything that it orders. Uh, and the last group of measures, which uh, in my view is uh, the most critical here and the most important, is uh, the measures that are implemented by citizens and businesses, but they require governmental support and they cannot be implemented without governmental support. Here we speak about educational system uh, because uh, education in very many countries is uh, either private or half private and um, uh, it's for the educational institutions to implement all the measures to uh, move to distant uh, online learning. Um, but uh, the government shall somehow support and provide uh, some facilities for the educational institutions to implement that. And of course, businesses, because um, it's, let's say, it's easy to close the business 
but it's very difficult to survive in the current situation. So uh, the governments should undertake certain measures in order to support businesses. Uh, I see one more question from Raisel. Uh, due to COVID-19, the prices of oil dropped by almost 50%. Russian economy is based on oil and gas and arms industry. Do you think the drop in oil pri prices will affect the job sectors of Russia? Uh, even the Russian economy is stable all the time. Uh, Russian economy is not stable all the time. I think that Russian economy is unstable all the time, so we do not uh, that much influenced by uh, the current situation. Uh, yes, uh, the problem with oil, uh, of course, uh, impacted greatly to Russian economy. But as far as I know, um, Russia has... Um, uh, a lot of money, I should say, uh, in the uh, governmental funds, which aim to provide stability in the country. And Russia can still um, invest to the economy of the country from uh, governmental funds. Um, very many countries around the world are in uh, the in worse situation from economic point of view uh, than Russia. And uh, in my view, Russia can still support the businesses and has money, uh, although, yes, uh, there are huge problems with oil prices, uh, Russia still has money for um, taking measures to support its citizens and its businesses, which Russia does not do. Uh, we will now follow to the support of businesses all around the world, uh, and um, I will not even mention Russia because we actually do not have any support measures uh, for businesses. Um, one more question. If the Russian government is given financial assistance to affected citizens, I will address this uh, issue uh, in, in a few minutes. We will now turn to uh, the support of the businesses and then I will turn to the support of uh, citizens. Uh, yes, a few words, just uh, uh, one remark about the public response to the measures. Um, at first, of course, the majority of people, they were that frightened uh, of the threat that existed that was posed to their lives and their health. Uh, so they took calmly what the government introduced. Uh, however, um, in April, uh, some states, not very many states, but some states faced um, public protests against measures that has been introduced. In many states uh, of the United States of America, there were protests, uh, both uh, public gathering demonstrations, and also, as you see at one of the pictures, there were protests in the cars, on the roads, when people blocked roads sitting in their cars, and therefore they did not violate the self-isolation regime. Uh, but they uh, they um, showed their attitude to the measures that uh, are introduced by the government. And also at one of the pictures, at the lower one, you can see uh, the demonstration in Israel uh, where people uh, followed uh, distancing rule. So they stand uh, one meter and a half away from each other. So they follow the isolation rule, but they protest against the measures that has been introduced. Surprisingly, we even had protests in Russia, uh, which are not um, widely covered by the media, but in some republics in Caucasus, uh, there were public protests against the measures that has been introduced, because uh, very many people do not see real need for such strict limitations. Um, I can also men mention that Oxford University provided research which measures uh, the strictness of the measures that were introduced in different countries. Uh, and Russia gets 100 score out of 100 uh, on the strictness of the measures, although the situation is not that uh, probably uh, difficult uh, with the, the number of sick people and the number of deaths. Uh, so let's turn to um, one more, in my view, probably the most uh, 
uh, topical issue connected to the measures, uh, which is support for businesses. Uh, so businesses all around the world now they uh, face very high burden, uh, which is connected first with the necessity to uh, continue business, to, to survive, let's say, to continue work um, uh, and uh, production, if we speak about uh, plants, factories. At the same time, uh, as I said at the beginning, all the binding payments are still due, uh, so they should pay taxes, they should pay, uh, pay uh, different business rates. Uh, and at the same time, businesses are responsible uh, to the employees. They should pay salaries, they should pay uh, rent, they should pay costs uh, uh, at different contracts, uh, which imposes very high burden on the uh, on the business. Uh, and in the situation where they cannot get profits. Uh, some compensation or some support shall be provided by the government. Uh, let's see um, what different governments offer to businesses. I want to start with the UK example because uh, United Kingdom, in my view, uh, offers one of the best support systems in the world nowadays. Uh, they have a specific websites uh, which enumerate the measures and which inform people about the measures they can take. Uh, and um, they provide flexible approach to different businesses. Uh, so what do they offer? Uh, uh, the government is ready to cover 80% uh, of wages uh, that is paid by the businesses to the people. Uh, which is critically important because uh, businesses have no money even to pay salary nowadays. Uh, the same uh, approach is taken to the sick leave. Uh, so the government is ready to cover uh, some costs related to the sick leave payments uh, from the businesses to the employees. Um, the deferral on some taxes, uh, including the value added tax, is also one of the measures introduced in the UK. Uh, they have the system of business uh, rates relief depending on the size of the business and depending on the branch of the business. For example, they have uh, specific uh, business rates relief to hospitals, to uh, businesses in healthcare sector. Uh, they provide uh, grants and uh, specific funds for businesses. Uh, and um, uh, again, here the system varies depending on the size of the business. They provide specific grants to small businesses and medium sized businesses, and they provide much bigger grants and um, uh, governmental guarantees to large businesses. Uh, and also they have uh, specific support for self-employed people. Um, I, of course, I cannot tell you that I analyzed measures implemented all over the world, but in my view, this list of measures is one of the most extensive in the world. And um, uh, I think uh, no other country offers such support to businesses. Uh, if we speak about other examples, uh, so we can mention that uh, Japan, for example, contributed 20% of its GDP uh, to support business, uh, which of course uh, caused uh, increase of the governmental debt um, for Japan, but still it speaks about the desire of the country, of the government to support its citizens and its economy. Uh, Almost uh, four, $400 billion uh, loans uh, are provided um, for small businesses in the United States of America. Um, even bigger amount of money is um, directed to the loans to large businesses, again, in the United States. Uh, in France, there is specific support for um, some sort of industries, like, for example, airways, uh, and also they uh, provide for, uh, 45 billion euro uh, to support salary payments uh, to people from the businesses. So they are ready to cover some of the expenses that businesses in her. Uh, Spain also provides some um, uh, grants and uh, funding um, to businesses and they are ready to um, 
to give uh, more than 100 billion euro uh, to uh, provide guarantees for businesses in Spain. Uh, and um, uh, the majority of uh, European countries and also the United States, uh, they provide extensive support to um, air industry, yes, to, to civil aviation. Uh, so, um, if to speak uh, about uh, measures in Russia that were undertaken to support business, uh, here I should say that um, the taxation is still due, so no measures were taken to provide deferral on taxes or to decrease the burden on taxation. Uh, even at some operations, the taxes were increased. So nowadays, if uh, the finances are going outside the country, uh, the, tax, the, the taxes uh, that shall be paid uh, raised from 2% to 15%, um, which uh, aimed uh, which is aimed to um, to keep the capital in in the country but which of course puts a burden to uh, businesses and to entrepreneurs um, also um, if to name some measures uh, there is a moratorium on uh, rent payments uh, for businesses, but this measure sh shall be decided on a case by case basis, uh, depended, uh, depending on the contract uh, obligations of the parties. So the government does not say that starting from today, uh, you should not pay your rent payments uh, to your counter partner. Uh, but um, mm, the government states that you should agree with your counterparty on the rate, uh, rent payments conditions. Uh, and uh, also uh, banks shall provide um, temporary cancellation on the interest payments uh, on uh, mortgages and credits uh, for businesses and for uh, citizens, uh, but again, on a case-by-case -case basis, and uh, if we speak about citizens, they should fall under certain requirements uh, which are not that um, widespread, let's say, uh, to use the measure. Uh, so uh, the measures implemented in Russia cannot be compared to uh, what we see in uh, um, European countries, uh, but in many other countries around the world, in Asia and Africa, uh, the situation is similar to Russia, where uh, the government does not have enough um, facilities to, to help businesses. Uh, in Russia, I think it's not the case. The government has uh, has finances to help uh, both people and um, businesses. Uh, and as for social guarantees to the citizens, uh, again, some examples um, from around the world, and then I will sa say a few words about Russian uh, situation. Uh, so uh, the UK, as I've already mentioned, provides grants, grants for self-employed. Uh, anyone can apply uh, online. Uh, beforehand a person can get all the necessary information in a very simplified form uh, on the specific website in the UK. So everything is done, let's say, for the simplicity of the measure. Uh, in some uh, cases, people even should not apply uh, directly or businesses should not apply for some measures. They will automatically be uh, implemented uh, in the UK. Uh, in Italy, um, all self-employed got uh, 500 euros. Uh, however, this payment was um, a lump sum, so they, uh, they got it once. Uh, I'm not sure they uh, get uh, something on a regular basis. Uh, also, Italy introduced prohibition on dismissal uh, because, as we know, of course, many businesses, they want to cut the costs and, uh, of course, they want to cut the la labor costs that are uh, um, incurred by the business. So they want to, uh, to fire, to dismiss people. Um, 600 euro, okay, okay, thank you, <laughs> Samuel, 600 euro. Uh, um, one more uh, measure that has been introduced in Spain is moratorium to mortgage payments uh, for citizens. Uh, in Germany, um, 
some financial support is provided also a sort of allowance is provided to people who either lost their job due to COVID or uh, who uh, do not ho have the opportunity to work because the organization uh, ceased its work temporarily or uh, has been closed. Uh, in the United States, every citizen uh, gets allowance of uh, $1,200 and, uh, uh, and they also uh, have allowance of five hundred uh, dollars to kids. Uh, as far as I know, this allowance is provided on a regular basis, monthly, uh, and uh, all the citizens in the U.S. they get this allowance, uh, both for themselves and for the citizens. Uh, the precise uh, amount of money can vary depending on the income of uh, a person, but this is, let's say, the average sum. Uh, and um, <laughs> the last line you see is devoted to Russia. You can compare <laughs> the sums. So Russia provides um, uh, support to families with children. Uh, Russia does not provide support to everyone. Uh, and um, we do not receive any additional allowances or payments, no matter whether a person has lost the job or is uh, um, Tempor uh, temporarily does not work, uh, still it does not lead to uh, any payments, uh, but um, every family with a child uh, who is under three uh, can uh, claim uh, $70 allowance, um, which uh, can be um, can be received uh, monthly uh, and also all the families with children from three to um, to 14 if I'm not mistaken uh, they can get um, twice more uh, for one kid uh, so uh, 100 and a half uh, dollars uh, they can get for one kid but once uh, so um, if to compare these measures with what we see in Europe, for example, um, I think uh, uh, I, cannot, uh, I cannot assess uh, uh, the policy which is provided uh, in Russia to this extent um, anyhow efficient. And um, um, we do not see that the government really cares about uh, its citizens. Uh, so, to conclude, I want to uh, pose a question, uh, what the state the government exists for? Uh, and the answer I offer you uh, is uh, to change the pattern, the stronger survives. So, uh, in uh, wild nature, yes, this is the task of every uh, creature to fight for its existence. But people unite to states in order to solve their problems all together. Uh, and uh, the main function of the state is to provide security of people uh, in different ways, yeah, and different sorts of securities, not only military security, but uh, also um, healthcare, security to lives uh, of the people uh, and uh, uh, the government shall care about its citizens. Uh, in my view, the situation that we see now in the world really um, shows uh, which governments care about their citizens and which do not. Of course, uh, it um, depends on the financing the government can um, can dispose, yes, so not uh, uh, very many governments are that rich uh, to provide extensive support to businesses and to the citizens. Uh, but what um, minimum measures shall be undertaken is at least specific legal regime uh, aimed at providing security and safety of people and to stop spreading of the disease. Uh, also, lawful restrictions of human rights uh, which aimed at again fighting the spreading of the uh, of the disease uh, and of course third point is uh, uh, specific measures of support uh, to both businesses and to citizens uh, which uh, will help uh, the economy to survive and businesses to survive in this uh, very difficult situation.
Uh, one more thing that uh, can be discussed here is the measures uh, that are taken to uh, decrease, let's say, the strict measures that were imposed. Uh, but by now, we do not have enough information to this point uh, because um, many countries are still either in the state of emergency or um, they are still with um, uh, their strict uh, regimes of limitations of human rights because uh, this the, the spread of the disease still continues um, so we'll see uh, what um, situation how the situation will develop and uh, of course many countries now will face major economic uh, problems um, the way uh, how they deal with this situation will show uh, whether the government deserves trusts of people and uh, whether the government is uh, effective enough. Uh, so I am ready to clarify some points which were probably not clear or to answer um, the questions. If you have any, please don't hesitate to ask. If you have no questions, then can you put anything in the chat for me to see that uh, you, uh, you've understood uh, everything? Uh, and yes, please, um, um, we hope that it won't bother you to fill in some feedback form that you now see in the chat. Um, we will be grateful if you give us some feedback uh, for us to improve. Um, our lectures for the future and uh, we are happy to, to, to uh, see you further on our intellectuals which will follow um, next weeks. You can see the schedule of the lectures on the website of the Graduate School of Economic, uh, Economics and Management. Uh, so if still uh, no question then thank you for your attention um, and um, I, I'm, I hope that yeah, you, you got some um, overview of what's going on in the world in terms of public administration and uh, uh, fighting COVID. Uh, thank you and uh, see you on our further uh, intellectuals.